All right, so now we're ready to go. We've got our, our data. Um, I've gone ahead and uh, placed my target out at the ideal distance uh, that I've identified on the uh, ballistic calculator. Remember, in the, the past videos, I showed you guys how to walk through that. I'm, I'm just basically balancing uh, drop at 100, or drop it uh, at distance, uh, like 300, uh, for add at my intermediate ranges. I'm just trying to balance them out. That's, that's how I like to do it. Uh, you may choose to do something completely different. You may want to be completely point of aim, point of impact at, at 300, or whatever you want to do. You just play around with it. Now, if your velocity numbers were significantly different through your chronograph, than you did for your uh, initial bore light, there's nothing wrong with uh, taking that new data back and re-bore lighting, right? Uh, and that'll get you as close as possible to uh, where you need to go. Uh, now, of course, mine hasn't changed too much because I already kind of knew the test answer for uh, uh, my ammunition, so uh, yeah, I, I was good to go here. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay down here and uh, fire a string. Now, I'm not going to tell you what distance my target's at. You know, uh, I, I do have a, a camera behind me. I chose not to place one down at the target uh, because I wanted you guys to be able to, to see how I adjust my natural point of aim and see me going through that process. I felt that was a bit more important than uh, you guys being able to see the rounds hitting or, or whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm limited on cameras. It is what it is. Uh, so, I'm not going to tell you exactly what distance my target's at, and that's just because I don't want someone going and saying, oh, hey, he, he's zeroing at this distance. That's what I'm going to go do. It defeats the entire purpose of what I'm trying to do here, uh, right? Uh, if that's what you want to do, just, just take someone's uh, you know gold standard and then just run with it. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my three-point safety check. Of course, confirm it's on safe. And we're just following good safety procedures. I mean, this is an introduction class, so we're not doing anything modified here. Uh, from this position, I can go ahead and take my magazine and, and load it. You know, I'm not really that worried about being, you know, tactical and high speed uh, right now. I just want to keep it good and safe. I'm keeping the rifle uh, supported. I'm not really going to concern myself with using the sling at this point. Does it make me more stable? Yes. Can it make beginning shooters cause to flag their muzzle around a little bit, taking it on and off? Yeah, it can. Uh, so what I'd like people to do when they're first starting shooting, shooting rifles like this is to just concentrate on one task at a time. I don't want you to have to worry about, you know, shrugging it off your, your head and your shoulder uh, and worried about where the muzzle's pointing. Uh, just, we're just going to lay it down here, you know, just... Uh, in, a, in a good supported position, up and down range, in a safe direction, and uh, we're gonna do our string. Now, how many rounds am I gonna shoot? Now, for grouping, I like 10 rounds. I, I like 10 rounds for grouping. It shows me a lot of consistency. Army standard is three rounds. Now, that is the minimum amount of rounds you need to kind of triangulate your shot group, but it doesn't really give you a good read on uh, what's happening. Now, remember, all marksmanship error occurs right here, okay? It doesn't occur down at the target. It occurs here at the shooter. That's very important. Uh, I've written a, a little uh, uh, shooter coach guide on how to read shot groups. You'll find that in the blog section of the Green Eye Tactical website. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and repin it on the uh, Facebook page as well. Uh, and if I get around to it, I'll, I'll link it in uh, this video down below. Uh, don't hold your breath though. Uh, what, I, what I'm trying to get at here is you're going to see some things happen down there, but it's only an indicator of what could be happening here. It doesn't mean because you're getting one shot pattern, this is what it is. Well, it could be probably what it is, but you don't know until you come back here and confirm. We'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, what I like to do is I like to fire five rounds. Uh, five rounds. Uh, you know, gives me a, a good body for that shot group and allows me to see what's going on. I think any more than five rounds, that target gets a little bit busy. Now, if you're really good and you're firing a really tight shot group, you're placing rounds consistently, okay, hey, you can get away with firing 10 because you're probably going to zero in just, uh, you know, two groups. It's not a big deal. But, you know, for uh, guys who are just starting out and uh, you may be laying down, you know, three or four groups working through some marksmanship issues, uh, you may want to go ahead and stick to, uh, to five rounds, and that'll just make the target a little less busy. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and get down into a good supported position. So I'm 
squaring myself to the target line here, okay? Uh, and I'm just trying to get as much mass behind the rifle as possible. Of course, I'm, I'm always going to maintain my thumb uh, resting on the safety so I, I know what position that safety's in. Fingers are going to wrap around the pistol grip. Index finger is uh, out straight and above the trigger well here. It's not in the trigger. Uh, my left hand is just going to support the weapon. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it into my cover here and into my shoulder. Now, uh, I just need to uh, go ahead and uh, find a job here for my non-firing hand. Now, there's a few different things I can do here. And notice I am using my 3 by here. Uh, that's because uh, my target is a little bit past 50 meters. Uh, I probably need to get my eyes burned uh, to get them corrected, but uh, it helps out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my natural point of aim first just a little bit because I'm pretty far off target. So I'm going to come, I need the, the sights to come right, so I'm going to pick up my hips, move them left. There we go. That's pretty good. Now, finding a job for this non-firing hand. Now, my rifle's pretty secure here. Now, of course, I've got a light here on the right side, which kind of makes it funny, resting it in between uh, these pads, so it's usually my light that's actually sitting there. Now, I could choose to put my hand up here and barricade it in on the cover, okay? Or I could take my hand and slide it back underneath my buttstock and hold it here. Now, what I like to do if, if I'm going to do this position is I want my, my elbow to point forward. So I'm actually going to move it forward just like that. And then I'm going to take these fingers and kind of try to grab my shoulder, all right? And that gets pretty stable. Same thing, we're still going to adjust natural point of aim from this position. There, and this gets pretty stable. Uh, it can help if you're a little bigger and you're having to arch your, your, your back up a little bit to uh, reach your rifle. This can help out a bit by, by supporting your uh, upper body weight. Uh, of course, I, I could go ahead and barricade on uh, my, my front rest, but I'm just going to go ahead and shoot like this for, for the moment. And I'm going to go ahead and double check my natural point of aim. Needed to come up a little bit. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. I'm going to dim down my sight a little bit. Remember, we want that dot as nice and dim and small as possible. We, we want to just see it. Right now, I can't even see my outer reticle for my EOTech. I can only see that center dot. And since I, I went ahead and moved, I, I, I adjust again. Okay, and I'm good to go now. I checked it a few times and we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my selector lever from safe to semi. Deep breath in, deep breath out. I didn't notice any excessive lateral movement on my sight, so I'm good with this natural point of aim. All right, so that was five. My finger comes off the trigger. Notice I reset it, uh, even on that last round. And now I'm gonna go ahead and place it on safe, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do at this point, since we're just starting out, is I'm gonna go ahead and clear my rifle because we are gonna move downrange. 
Uh, later on, if you're going to do some modified range procedures, hey, I, I do prescribe it as long as no one's touching this, it's not going to go off on its own. But for right now, let's go ahead and uh, give it a good clear. So source comes out. We're going to lock the bolt to the rear. Three-point safety check, chamber, source of feed, bolt face. Stick my chamber flag back in. Now since I observed where this round was, I can go ahead and put it back in. And let's go ahead and uh, see what kind of results we All right, got. guys, so unfortunately the, the heat out here in, uh, in Texas in the middle of summer here is uh, giving some issues. Uh, my, my camera keeps overheating as soon as I take it uh, out on the range there uh, outside of the shade. So I, I actually had to jog the target back up here uh, to be able to film this, uh, this segment. Uh, also, my, my contour camera that I was using from other angles has, has died for some reason. So, just down with this for the moment. Uh, so, here's what we got. Uh, I'm fairly happy with this group. Now, I don't want you to be discouraged if, if your groups don't look like mine. It's not a competition between you and me. Okay, the, the group you throw down is, is yours. Uh, and it, you're just going to work with what you have. It's not a big deal. Don't, don't feel intimidated by people shooting to the left and right of you. Okay, uh, you, you're here to Im improve yourself. Okay, so just uh, just want to make that clear. So uh, I'm I'm south of center here uh, a little bit. Now I've actually already measured this, and uh, what I'm getting is uh, just a just a hair over two inches. It's actually uh, in uh, two inches and uh, and an eighth inch. So uh, what do I need to do here? I've drawn my my handy little uh, chart for you here. So I'm, I'm using an uh, EOTech uh, EXPS 3.0. Uh, it's got half MOA clicks. Now, this may not work for your site if, if you're using a different site. Check your owner's manual. This is just uh, for the EOTech setup that I've got. So let's go over MOA again, right? Uh, one MOA is one inch at 100 meters. Two inches at 200, three inches at 300. So, uh, sorry, yards, not meters, habit. Uh, so 50, and I've even written it here, yards, and I'm still saying meters. Uh, so 50 yards uh, is going to give me uh, a, a half inch at, uh, at, at 50. And then 25, it's going to give me a, a quarter. Uh, now, I'm hot, so I need to drink some water. I've already uh, done the, uh, the math here. Uh, so that's going to give me one click. Uh, is going to give me an eighth inch at 25, a quarter inch at 50 a half inch at 100, one inch at 200, and one and a half at three. Makes sense, because it's, it's half of that value. It's half MOA per click, so it, it's half of the value up there. So if uh, I'm two and uh, uh, about an eighth, and I'm, I'm going to round it down to two because I'm actually slightly past uh, uh, 50 meters. I'm not going to say exactly what I'm at, because uh, I want you to shoot your own zero. but. Uh, What's that going to give me? I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of round it there. So we'll call that two inches for, for my purposes. Uh, so if I, if I need to come two inches at 50 yards and each click is going to give me a quarter click, right? So there's four clicks in, in each inch. I need to come two inches. That's eight clicks, right? What direction? I need to come up. Okay, it's kind of important to, to track these. You can just write them uh, here on the target if you want. There, there's no big deal. I mean, uh, you, you know, I can, I can go ahead and write uh, uh, eight up here if I want. Or, yeah, eight up, you know, if you're in the military, that sounds kind of funny. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to go eight clicks up. But uh, I'm just going to write it here on my, my board here uh, so, it, uh, so I can keep track of it. But uh, uh, that's pretty much it. If you're doing, uh, you know, multiple shots on one target, of course, I'm using these uh, shoot and see centers. Which are really nice. I can kind of see a little bit of the grouping through my scope. Uh, it's a little blurry, but uh, you know that's all right. Uh, what I might want to do is take some different colored markers and uh, go ahead and mark them, you know, and then number them. Especially if you're going to use the same target for multiple groups, uh, you know, number them and, and color code them. Now, word of caution here: if you are just starting out, okay, uh, and, and your shot group's a little loose. I don't recommend you make any corrections until you can consistently place a group, consecutive groups, in the same location. Now, uh, for the purposes of speeding up the filming here, 
uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this adjustment and uh, fire the next group. But you may want to go ahead and fire another group. You know, your group might not be that tight. Uh, you know, and it, what's going to happen is if you make a site correction and you're not certain that there's, there's not any type of uh, visionary site placement error, especially if you're using iron sights, uh, you could have some alignment issues. You could wind up chasing your shot group around, right? Uh, maybe you're looking through the site at, at one angle, uh, you make a site adjustment correction for it, and then the next time you fire, you do something different, it changes the angle you're looking through again, and it's going to place the shot uh, entirely in a different location. Uh, you know, those, those of us who've been in the military, you know, and, and run ranges, especially uh, uh, in the infantry, you know, when I started out in the, the military, uh, we used to run a lot of 25 meter zero ranges. And, uh, you know, NCOs can tell uh, lots of horror stories about sitting out there all day chasing zeros around the target. You got to make sure a guy will place a, a shot group in the same location with consecutive groups. So something to think about, you know, if, if you're a little loose, you're not quite sure what's going on, place another group. Okay. So uh, for our purposes, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make these corrections. I'm going to go eight clicks up and uh, let's lay down another group and see how it goes. All right, so let's go ahead and put our correction into our optic. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and use this uh, uh, Leatherman Mutt that I have. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you could use. Uh, of course, I could use a, a spent piece of brass um, and use that. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and use a screwdriver. So uh, my correction was that I needed to come eight up, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the knobs here. Now, there's two knobs on this optic, okay? Uh, one says right, and it's got an arrow. The other's got down and an arrow, okay? So that tells me that one of these knobs is going to adjust it up and down. The other is going to go left and right. Now, of course, for, uh, you know, you could put a, a paint mark with a, with a big bright arrow on it, you know, pointing in a different direction. That works great, you know, for, you know, uh, nighttime or whatever, but... Uh, I can't think of a single time where I've had to adjust my zero uh, in, in a situation where I couldn't break out a white light. I mean, that's just not something you do under under combat situations is uh, go ahead and adjust your zero. So, you know, I'm not that big on, on putting a, a paint mark. You know, I, I, I will buy off on, you know, hey, if you want to put a, a paint line uh, through the bolt uh, to see if it's moved on you, uh, you know, that's great. But I tend to confirm and reconfirm my zero uh, quite a bit, so I notice if it's if it's slipping. Uh, so yeah, that's that's just me. I, I don't do it. You know, I know a lot of people do, and hey, it, it sounds great. So uh, there's nothing wrong with it. But so I, I want to go eight up. So I'm going to go the opposite direction of the down arrow, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and make my corrections here. There we go. Now once I've made them. Uh, for this optic, for the EOTech, uh, what I do is I like to give it uh, a few taps on each axis. Now, I've got the armor shield on. I'm not saying, you know, take a ball peen hammer and start whacking away on it, uh, but I just give it a few whacks. And I talked about this in a previous video, you know, about how sometimes the, the laser can settle. And I've, I've seen them uh, jump significantly, uh, you know, between adjustments. Uh, so that's just something that I like to do. All right, so uh, I've, I've got my ammo. I had to throw my bandolier out of here because I'm getting attacked by ants. Uh, but let's go ahead and lay down uh, another five-round group and uh, uh, see where this sets us. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and put my eyes and ears back on. There we go. And I'm going to still do my three-point safety check. Tech still looks good, so let's do our natural point of aim again. <sighs> All right, so that's looking good. So let's go ahead and do a good five round group now.
And you may notice I'm just inhaling and exhaling between shots. I'm still holding the trigger to the rear. Uh, the only reason you don't see me adjusting my natural point of aim between the shots is because I'm not seeing my sights move left or right. If I saw my sights move left or right or I saw excessive lift, I'd go ahead and recheck my natural point of aim again. Again, still reset on the last shot. Finger comes off. Safety goes on. Let's go ahead and clear. See, nothing changes safety-wise. Let's put that round back in. All right, and uh, let's go see how we did. All right, so again, got the target back up here, and uh, let's have a look at the uh, the second group. Uh, Notice it loosened up a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I felt some shots that were off a little bit. I felt like my, my cover might have been shifting a little bit, and I was getting some uh, lateral error there. Uh, notice that 8, theoretically, if I was right at 50, it should have brought me below the dot. Now, I'm, I'm past 50, so that adjustment for 50 actually brought me up a little bit more. Now, we're to note here, there can be a, a little bit of voodoo uh, when it comes to uh, adjusting EOTEX. And uh, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I've seen on the ranges where you do your calculations, you know, and one guy goes over, one guy goes under, or, or it magically moves right a little bit or left. It just happens. Uh, but once you get it doped on, it, it stays there, uh, and, and it's very easy to zero. But uh, just, you know, don't, don't get discouraged if you wind up bracketing your, your group a little bit, you know, or you, you make a precise adjustment that you've measured, and it, it brings you a little bit over, a little bit under. Uh, you know, for, for being a little bit past 50 uh, yards, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty close. You know, we're kind of happy with that. Uh, you know, we're, we're right at the center. You know, we're, we're shooting, I guess that's uh, sub MOA. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to me measure it. Uh, so that's good. But it's a little bit loose for me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and practice what I preach. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay down a, another group. And uh, let's see if it's in the, the same uh, general area. Uh, and I'm not doing anything, you know, wrong. Maybe I'm, like, looking through it at a different angle. I'm doing something. I'm moving it. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down another group, make no adjustments. And uh, let's, yeah, we'll just, I'll shift up here to the next target, and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right? All right, so, uh, again, we're going to go ahead and fire uh, another group here. Uh, see if we can tighten that up a bit. Uh, just to make sure that there's uh, there's no other errors here, and I'm just gonna take a real real close pay close attention here to make sure I'm doing everything the same every time. Let's get that nice and tight. I'm going to make real fine adjustments with my natural point of aim. So I want that dot to be right on the center during my natural respiratory pause. All right, that looks good. Tweak it. Notice I'm still holding the trigger to the rear. Good. All right, that, that felt really good. Hopefully that turns out well.
And it looked all right from uh, my three by, but we'll see when we get a little bit further down range here. All right, well, let's go see how we did. All right, so th that group felt a lot better and it, it looks a lot better. Uh, now, if you notice here, uh, it stayed in the same general area, right? I'm just just a little bit, little bit high and to the right, you know, kind of at the at the you know 132 o'clock, uh, and it tightened up significantly. So checking that natural point of aim, you know, taking real close attention, uh, made a big difference. You know, I also think that that second round is it just getting a little hot, getting some sweat in the eye, and it just it just loosened up on me. But I'm really really happy with that uh, third group. Uh, just gets better with time. I guess I just need to keep drinking more water. Uh, so, should I make a correction here? Now remember, I'm a little bit past uh, 50 yards, right? So, 50 yards, one click is going to bring me a quarter inch. Now, I've already looked at this. Uh, a quarter inch adjustment, if I go left a little bit, it could bring me a little bit to the left of center. Uh, I could bring it, you know, down, and, and that would bring me in. But what I like to do at this point, this is, this is pretty close to center right here. What I'll actually do now is uh, I'll just work on, on grouping, and I like to bring it back in distance. So, uh, you know, if I'm shooting uh, this tight at a little bit past 50, uh, let's go ahead and kick it up to 100, you know. Uh, if, if I'm grouping really consistently there, then I'll, I'll move it back to 150, and then 200, just keep moving back, right? And that, that's how we kind of challenge ourselves. If we loosen up, okay, we work on a little bit. If we need to move up a little bit more, then we move up. Uh, but I, I don't like to spend a whole lot of time at our, our near intersect area for, for our uh, bullet trajectory, uh, you know, just trying to trying to knock the X out of the, uh, the the circle. You know, we don't we don't live our lives at 25 meters, 50 meters. We we want to get out at that distance, and that's where we want to do our grouping and our refinement. And uh, the other benefit is uh, uh, we'll get more movement out of the shot group. You know, it's it's obviously going to loosen up as we uh, move farther back, so it's going to make you know errors that we we make uh, while we're shooting quite a bit more evident right there's not a whole lot of read on this this shot group at uh, at the distance that I was shooting at you know just past 50 uh, but if I moved that if I fired that same shot group at say 200 okay that shot group is going to be a, a bit bigger and you know I'm going to have something to read there to see you know what kind of tiny little errors I'm making to improve my shooting uh, you know, so don't don't be afraid to well, my Red Bull. Uh, don't be afraid to, to move in or closer or back or whatever you need to do. Uh, but also, don't spend all day you know at your uh, initial intersect uh, range. You know, once once you get dialed in, you know, good enough. Yeah, I could come down one click, but I'm leave it for the moment. Uh, just move back at distance. So. Uh, that's what you're going to do from here. You know, just continue to work on your zero. Continue to repeat this process until you get dialed in acceptably, and then just just go ahead and uh, you know work back at you know one, two, and three hundred meters. Uh, you really make uh, the, the the bulk of your your fundamentals work in the prone, doing grouping. Uh, I'm telling you. I mean, uh, uh, operators that you know join special missions units. I mean, you you spend weeks out on the flat range uh, grouping. You know, prone, seated, kneeling, standing, 100, 200, 300, 400. You're, you're doing iron sights. You're doing uh, optics. You, you're doing all that to build those fundamentals. It's not something you can just press the easy button, go out to the range one day, and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're diamond up your shots. It's not going to happen. You've got to put in the time. You've got to put in the effort. And you've got to be consistent. Okay? And, of course, having good data uh, helps. You can see today, uh, you know, just from our, our laser bore lighting, we were pretty much on, okay? Uh, I, I attribute, uh, you know, that, that drop right there, that difference, and, you know, a little bit of variance I had in my, my velocity. And also, it's, it's quite a bit warmer today. But uh, it is what it is, and, you know, we're, that's pretty close, you know, for, for not, not being zero. And that just saves you a lot of time. So wind's picking up here a little bit. Uh, so in, in three groups, you know, I'm, I'm on. And really, the third group was a confirmation wasn't it you know we, we, we could be good with that so uh, you know you too if, if you do good fundamentals and uh, you know go through these processes like like I told you about you know in a minimal amount of rounds uh, you can get a really good zero on your weapon and have really good data on it okay everything else from here is just uh, uh, confirming the trajectory chart that you print out
All right. So from uh, from here, we're gonna we're gonna move on to some uh, bigger and better things. Uh, stay tuned.